Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very excited to be here. It's such an honor to be sharing with you all today. So this is a picture, old school picture, group of students preparing for some folkloric function. And that little brown girl over there, that's me, daughter of an immigrant family who was a dreamer, a dreamer about the future. I don't know if all of you recognize that small picture over there because you're too young, but <laughs> the Jetsons were very popular in the 60s and the 70s and then until the 90s. So I was a dreamer. I would watch this cartoon and see that future technology in it. So I decided to study biochemistry. I decided to be a scientist, passionate about research, development, science and technology. And I studied biochemistry, but not in the US, where there are more than 4,000 researchers and developers per million inhabitants, neither from Europe, where there are more than 3,000 researchers and developers per million inhabitants, nor from Japan, where there are more than 5,000 researchers and developers per million inhabitants, nor from Singapore, where there are more than 6,000. I'm from Latin America, where there are just 503 researchers and developers per million inhabitants. So if I look into my science education as well, this is what it looked like. <laughs> it was very theoretical, you know, full of formulas, not very engaging. It, it, were, it was as if my father would have taught me how to ride a bicycle reading a book. We're asked to actually learn how to ride a bicycle. You need to live the experience of riding a bike. Just like in science, to actually learn science, you need to live the experience of scientific experimentation. Many times you need equipment, which unfortunately is expensive. And here are some examples of the cost of lab equipment. And as a consequence, 88% of the schools in Latin America, according to the Inter-American Development Bank, don't have any labs. Moreover, if you look at the PISA results, Latin America and the Caribbean are at the very bottom with the lowest result. The US isn't any better. So this reality, this multi-factor problem that we have where there's no lab equipment or it's very expensive, teachers need a lot of help you know, to implement proper pedagogy, implementing experimental science education with the right tools, equipment, Unfortunately, we have a challenge in the US, in the world, when it comes to teaching. Whereas teachers you know, have a fundamental role in science education, but they need help. So we've got expensive lab equipment, teachers that need help, right? And students that are not engaged. So how can we truly democratize science and change the way science is taught? So the first time in human history, we've got a massive vehicle. There are more than three billion smartphones in the world that have more computing power than the first computer that took the man to the moon. So many don't know, but you guys for sure, because you're very smart, that smartphones and tablets have several built-in sensors that are normally used in games and navigation. You take a selfie, hail an Uber, but not for science education. So what we do at Lab4U is we take all these sensors, the camera, the microphone, the accelerometer, and transform it into a complete science lab. In that way, we empower students to experiment with a lab in their pocket. And here's an example where students are actually experimenting with our physics app, lab for physics pendulum movement, centripetal acceleration, getting the data in real time. This is students learning the difference between distance and displacement, graphing it, or force mass and acceleration, and getting all that information. Or with chemistry, you can calculate the concentration of a solution based on color, just like a colorimeter, where we take a picture with our algorithm and with the camera and calculate the concentration of the unknown solution. Or with a $1 lens attached to the camera of the phone, you can transform it into a complete microscope, empowering students to have this lab in your pocket. We're soon launching Lab for Chemistry, which replaces the expensive colorimeter uh, that many use. And this is one example of students actually experimenting. All children love to create, to experiment. One of the best things about lab for You is that without a whole lot of explanation, they're able to take that tool, 
and start creating experiments. Today we did a skateboard experiment with Lab for Physics and pretty much what we did in that is we tested the iPad on different surfaces. We're sliding down the iPad to see and measure the speed it goes down based on the distance and time and we're teaching the little kids how to do that so that they can learn a little more too. I love doing those because it's more fun than worksheets. I prefer to work with things that are in my hands. So this was just one example of how students can actually experiment with their smartphones and their smart devices. So we've visited many places around the world, especially Latin America, where we have empowered students to experiment. And in this world of digital transformation, in this fourth industrial revolution, where technology has changed our behavior, for example, today we can read books on, on Kindle, or we have music through iTunes and Spotify, or the Texas Instrument became, the Casio calculator became actually our scientific calculator in a phone. So why can't we leverage smartphone technology to actually change the way we do science and experiment with this, with this technological device? So visiting students around the world, uh, we believe that talent is universal, but opportunities are not. Uh, we've, today we've got more than 100,000 students experimenting, especially in Latin America, Mexico, and the US, and we truly believe that the next Einstein or Marie Curie can be anywhere in the world. Uh, it could be in the south of Chile, in Mexico, in a slum in a favela in Brazil, in Binghamton uh, as well, or any place in the US or the world. Why not empower these students uh, to be the next Einstein or Marie Curie? Our students have done more than 100,000 experiments through our platform and, and in Mexico we did what we call a randomized controlled trial with more than 4,800 students. So there was a control group with no lab for you, st students with no lab for you and then a treatment group with the social intervention with lab for you. And what this third party validated research found is that students who run more than three experiments increase in knowledge in self-perception of knowledge, which is very important for a, motivation, for a motivation aspect, and most importantly, their interest to pursue a STEM-related career, which makes us very happy, especially in Latin America, when we're thinking of the future of the workforce and the importance of STEM. These are some pictures that teachers, that students have shared with us. So you can see one of the pictures where students have their smartphones in the state of Sinaloa, Mexico. So we're speaking about families and communities that have, that we speak about mobile first. So before even buying a, a computer, they'll have a smartphone. So these mobile first economies rely on smartphones. So what we've found is that Though we have the technology, it's not always used in a proper way. I'll give you one example. So uh, these were some schools in, in Mexico where they had the smartphones, but the school had no Wi-Fi. So we're speaking about education technology and that this is going to change uh, education, but the schools have no Wi-Fi. So what can we do? So what we did at that for you, we thought ourselves as being like the Netflix of science, where you can download a series, but instead of downloading a series, you actually download an experiment. So we developed the technology where you can use our technology without actually having Wi-Fi. So you go to a library or to a Starbucks, you download all the content and all the experiments and all the tools, and then you can go to school and run an experiment in case you don't have Wi-Fi uh, in your school. The other thing we observed in our communities is that though there was technology, there was a technology gap in teachers, especially the older teachers. Um, there was one, one aspect of it where we visited schools where the teachers had smartphones but did not know how to download apps. So I would go to the teacher and I would tell him, Professor, the same way you downloaded that Facebook app that I see in your smartphone, that's how you download our technology. Well, the thing is that my daughter downloaded that. So these are some of the realities and some of the things that we've seen in our communities, and that's why for us teacher training is so important and empowering teachers so that science is inspirational and aspirational is so important. When I look into my education and I think of the teacher's role, I never told my friend, I've got a friend sitting right here, I never told her, Oh my God, page number 247 of that textbook changed my life. 
I never told her that, right? What did I say? I said, that teacher inspired me to see things differently. That teacher helped me see the world around me. That teacher changed my life. And that is why for us it's so important to empower teachers so that they can inspire students into science, to being better human beings, asking questions where questions and inquiry is just more important than the answers. Remember this little girl, brown little girl, daughter of an immigrant family back in Chile, a dreamer looking at the Jetsons. Remember this? So what did the Jetson envision that we have today? If you look at these cartoons from the 60s and 70s and 80s, what is, the what is the technology, what are some of the aspects of their technology that they envisioned back in the 70s that we have here today? Can you think of some things that they envisioned and that it's a, it is a reality today? Somebody said there something? Robots, yeah, what else? FaceTime, yeah, what else? What else? Smartwatches, yeah? You mentioned FaceTime, video conferencing tools, that's right. Plasma TV, you know, straight plasma TVs. We did not have that in the 60s and 70s, right? Telemedicine, that's something popular today, especially in the developing world. Robots, somebody mentioned robots. Yeah, Hyperloop. <laughs> so these were technologies that were envisioned in the 60s and 70s and that we have today, it is a reality today. But what do you think that the Jetsons could not envision? Schools, the traditional classroom. The same blackboard, chalkboard, full of formulas, students not engaging, same traditional science class. Something that they could not envision. So for us, technology, innovation can change several aspects and areas of our lives. Transportation, energy, climate change, healthcare. What do you think you can design or develop to change current educational system or any other issue that you care about? What has, what has to happen so that we can leapfrog inequality? It doesn't have to be a straight line, but what can we do to actually change that future so that we can democratize science and change the way science is taught? So that students like this one can actually experiment, see the world around them, so when we think about the future uh, and how industries and companies have actually changed how we live, how technology has changed how we behave, so you see that this future that we're envisioning, it's actually here. You've got Uber, the world's largest taxi company, but owns no cars, or Spotify that provides so much music, they don't own that music, or Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, but owns no real estate. So what can we do to actually provide this educational lab experience without the need to have your own lab? As I was saying, um, talent is universal, but opportunities are not. And we think of you know, good intentions are not good enough to change and help world, solve the world's biggest challenges. We need a real understanding of science to actually do that. Though speed might be measured miles per hour, life should be measured smi as smiles per hour. So if we can give every student the opportunity to have this joy and see the world around them with the lab in their pockets, we believe we can make a difference. And in that way, the next Einstein or Marie Curie can be anywhere in the world. Thank you very much.